Ekadashi is called Tithi. So now to understand the scientific reasons behind this Ekadashi fasting, we need to understand what is Tithi from the uh, astrological point of view. Tithi is the distance covered by the moon in 24 hours around the earth. When the moon moves for about 12.41 degree in the space around the earth, that is called one tithi. That means if you say that the moon starts from point zero and it has to complete its entire path, 360 degree, means it, it has to come back to its original position. The time taken for the complete cycle is about 29 days, little, little here and there. It's about 29 days. So 360 degree divided by 29, it will be about 12.41 degree. So when the moon covers that much distance, and that distance is called Tithi. So that means Pratipada, Vitiya, Tritiya, Chaturthi, Panchami, Shashti, Saptami, Ashtami, Navami, Dashami, Ekadashi, like this. Uh, these are all Sanskrit names for numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So now we all know that uh, when the moon moves 180 degree, if you, if you consider the beginning of the moon travel from uh, the sun, when it is in conjointly in the sun, and when 180 degree it moves, that 180 degree, it takes about 15 days or 15 tithis, the 12.41 degree into 15 if you do, it, it is about 180 degree. And that when the moon is 180 degree from the sun, away from the sun, it is called full moon. And when again the moon travels furthermore, it comes back to its uh, this one and now it is conjointly uh, in one line with the sun earth and then it is called no moon so this is the little bit of basics and now every day 12.41 <coughs> degree when the moon is moving ekadashi means the 11th day in the 11th the 11th day of the travel of the moon so there is a gravitational force from the earth on the moon and the moon is also having a certain gravity, certain force being exerted on earth. Because of this, we can see what is the result of this. Uh, if you happen to be on the beach and full moon and no moon, you will see tides, tides, high tide, low tide being formed because of the moon. So the moon pulls the water. The moon has this effect on the water. The moon gravity or magnetic, it pulls, it has a pulling effect on the water. And we all know that human body is about 70 to 80 percent made up of water. So we are not, uh, uh, we are not, we can't say we are not affected by the moon movement. So because our body is also made up of 80 percent water, in fact Garuda Purana says, that all the seven oceans are also there in the human body. So even keeping that apart, if you just uh, scientifically see from the physical science, we see that there is so much of water in the human body. And this water also comes under the moon's pulling effect. So it is astrologically studied. The science uh, approves this point that the moon's pull is highest on the earth, on the water, on the ocean, on the, the human body because there is so much of water in the human body from the 11th day of that fortnight. When the moon is in its that particular position, its, its pull, its magnetic pull is highest on us. And what is the connection when the, when the pull is too much on a human body, what is the connection? We all know some of the important parts of our human body are digestive system, the brain. These are some of the very important parts of human body. So uh, on the 11th day, that is Ekadashi from Sanskrit uh, language, our 11th day of the fortnight 
astrologically because of the moon's maximum pull magnetic pull on the human body there is a disruption in the digestive system in the human body it is not the same the human body doesn't secrete the enough fluid in the digestive system so there is a disruption and because of this uh the the brain and the digestive system are not in the, in their best condition due to this astrological conditions in the sky and it is said that the the memory is weak and the digestive system is weak and also the decision making capacity because of all this condition is also weak during this time because of the moon's magnetic pull on the body is highest during this particular position of the moon the 11th day of the fourth night so the body contains 80% water so it is almost behaves like an ocean like how there are high tides in the ocean you can see that how the as though the moon is pulling the ocean towards it and that's how the high tide means what the water is is going towards the moon there's so much of pull and push inside our body so our body the brain the memory digestive system it all comes under this effect so it is not in its best capacity the digestion system is not in its best capacity so if you load your body at that time with so much of food when the digestion system is weak that means you are subjecting your body to a problem it is not in a right condition to digest the food and ayurveda says and also the medical science says indigestion is the cause of all diseases in our body when the food is not digested that non digested food becomes like a poison in our body becomes toxic you know and people spend a lot of money cleansing this all uh, toxic things that is there in our body so they attract lot of diseases create uneasiness and so many other kind of uh, negative effect on our body because of indigestion so this indigestion uh, is because when the digestion system is weak and you put the food into the body at that time so the body cannot handle it so that is how on ekadashi day if you don't eat your body is actually you are helping your body it is like you are helping the body to cleanse during that time so that body goes through cleansing process during this particular period and uh, many scientists have done research on this there is one uh, scientist um, you know yalinko he is a russian scientist so he has done a study on this and he proves that the moon does not have the same effect every day the effect of the moon on the earth on water on human body is different on the different positions of the moon in the sky when the moon is uh, you know full moon or no moon the effect is highest so like this he has done a research so based on that research it is very easy to understand why uh, our body digestion system the brain and memory and decision making they all get affected based on the different position of the moon in the sky there is also one more study done that uh, study is on dna so we all have studied what is dna and all that so the scientists have discovered there is some portion of the dna that is called junk dna this junk dna doesn't carry much of the information of the dna it is like the scientists were not very clear what is this junk dna it is unnecessary you know the, there are different stages of uh, research on what is dna junk dna and all it is like if you if you consider the most important part of the dna is in the center this junk dna is it's like as if it is covering on the edges or the side of the dna so now the scientists have discovered it is like protecting the center portion of the dna this junk dna how much of this junk dna 
is intact that much you are healthy that much you are strong and that long you live but what happens the scientists uh, in their research they have discovered every time when the cells multiply every time when the cells divide a certain portion of the junk dna gets lost it gets deteriorated it the wear and tear happens that means when the new dna gets formed or when the new not, not sorry new dna when the new cell comes so that does not have the same junk dna now so it has now weaker uh, junk dna so now they found out why this happens like that the scientists have also discovered that aging is related to the loss of this junk dna the diseases are connected to the loss of the de junk dna the death is connected to the loss of dna when the when the junk dna is completely gone then we die we give the more details of this you know we can study on internet how all that happens so they wanted to know because you know in the material world everybody likes to not die they want to live forever so when they discovered that this junk dna is responsible for our death aging disease and all that so they want to avoid it so how to avoid it what helps junk dna remain intact so then they finally discovered actually fasting upavas helps reducing the loss of the junk dna so they did lot of experiment all that information is there we can discover how that happens and all that and they did different ways and means to find out what is the exact way uh, of uh, reducing this junk dna loss and they finally discovered that 36 hours of upavas or the fasting is what helps the junk dna not lose a significant portion of its uh, when the cell division happens what is this 36 hours of uh, you know fasting is on dashami day uh, in the evening after sunset when you take food till the sunrise of the dwadashi if you calculate it is a 36 hours so the scientists have also discovered that you cannot simply oh because fasting helps you doesn't mean every day you fast so after doing lot of permutations and combination they have discovered keeping all this in the mind the movement of the moon in the sky and uh, our body uh, digestion capacity in the mind so finally if you do fasting during this phase of the moon for 36 hours you live longer you live healthily you live happily so this is the scientific research that says and science also uh, whoever have done this research also have discovered those who eat meat those who have illicit sex and those who consume alcohol and all this kind of activities they in during their cell division the loss of the junk dna is more that means they die faster so even if you see from this research point of view sinful people it is said that you know if you do sinful activities shastra say that your ayu reduces means you die faster so even the scientific research says the same thing the portion of the junk dna loss is more the wear and tear of the junk dna is more if you do if you indulge in all these activities so you avoid all these activities and you increase your fasting especially on the ekadashi day there are many more reasons we are you know due to paucity of the time we are only focusing on this how the position of the moon in the space on the 11th day of the fourth night which is called ekadashi according to the research done by this russian scientist yalinko he says that the magnetic pull of the moon on the human body because there is 80% water in the human body is the highest and due to this disruption there is a disruption in the digestion system Uh, in the human body and there is the brain and the secretion of the fluids in the digestion system all gets disturbed to help the human body not undergo so much of stress if you eat food during this time the body undergoes too much of a stress so to avoid all these things we have to 
avoid eating food on the 11th day of the fourth night which is called ekadashi this is the so called the physical level of explanation it's a physical world explanation but we know that bhagavad gita says you are not just a physical being you are also a spiritual being okay this is the effect on the physical element or physical uh, dimension of our existence but what about the spiritual impact now let us see this word ekadashi means what literal meaning of ekadashi means 11 that is the meaning of ekadashi now what is this 11 this 11 is a very interesting number from the vedic perspective there are 11 senses that we all possess five knowledge acquiring senses five working senses and one mind bhagavad gita krishna says among the senses he is the 11th sense the mind so there are total 11 senses ekadasha indriya it is said ekadasha so now what is the meaning of ekadashi upavas now let the one we understood what is ekadashi meaning now let us understand the word upavas vasaha means reside vasa means reside or stay upavasa upa means near upa means near upavasa means staying very close staying very close residing very close so what is this staying very close residing very close to home so taking all the eleven senses as close as possible to the supreme lord is called ekadashi upavas upavasa means staying close by residing very close by now ekadashi upavasa means that all the eleven senses they should now become closer as closer as possible to the supreme lord this is the literal meaning of ekadashi upavas now we all know from bhagavad gita from vedas and upanishads that the only goal of human life the only reason why we got this manushya janma or human life is actually to go back to krishna to stay with krishna currently we are staying away from god so ekadashi is a reminder that you have to stay with god stay as close to god as possible so this an ekadashi day we have to remind ourselves what is that i should be with god i should stay with god how far how far or how close as close as possible at least today you practice it like when there is a sports or there is a dance or the anything like before exam you get some prepare prepare what is it called preparatory exam so we all write some preparatory exam so this preparatory exam prepares you for the final exam so at the time of death krishna says in bhagavad gita antakale cha mameva smaran muktva kalevaram whoever is in association with me at the time of death they will come back to me right so likewise before the final performance there will always be some uh, what is that called a rehearsal or a pre uh, pre final something like that so ekadashi is that pre final because you know, we you know we are all foolish people we say oh what is there at the time of death i will remember krishna don't worry don't worry we all say this so the test is how much you are close to god you can keep testing once in 15 days otherwise the whole life 100 years well, somebody can be in great illusion no thinking that yes yes i am very close to god don't worry i will remember god i am in association of god and i like many students do this no 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 i know the subject i know the subject don't worry don't worry to help such students teachers keep giving some preparatory exam some test so that every month you know how much you know your subject so that is one reminder for you 
you are not evaluated based on your test result but you are evaluated based on your final result but the test result will show you where you are standing in your preparation you can't ignore your preparation so human life or manushya janma is a preparation for death what is that in at the time of death we are supposed to do we have to demonstrate that we are in close association with god mam eva anusmara ante narayana smriti i am i am in contact with narayana closely in contact with narayana so krishna such people will be taken to vaikuntha now ekadashi means what all the 11 senses pancha gnanendriya pancha karmendriya eka manaha five knowledge acquiring senses five working senses and one mind and all the senses we should train how to be closer to god on that day so how do we train engaging in spiritual activities so on ekadashi day it is a training day it is a preparation day so that today should look like how your death looks like what do you mean by death sirs should everybody sit around us and cry the death day looks like no that is a very wrong way of dying and wrong way of uh, you know celebrating death so how everybody what shastra says is on death day around you there must be so much of glorification of the god going on that means there should be more association going on more sankirtana going on more reading of bhagavad gita bhagavatam going on more remembrance of the lord going on engaging in the service of the lord going on so on ekadashi day all the 11 senses maximize their contact with krishna maximizing their contact with krishna the like kambarish maharaj says what does he says he says vai uh, vachamsi vai kuntha gunanu varnane my tongue should always glorify the vai kuntha karo harer mandira marjana do my hand should be engaged in cleaning the temple then leg should be engaged in walking to the temple like this my eyes should be engaged in seeing the form of the lord the beauty of the lord my nose should be engaged in smelling the fragrance of the flower tulsi that is offered to the lord so like this all the senses see senses can never be free they are always busy in doing something eyes are always seeing something the ears are listening to something so that day ekadashi day all the senses should only do activities that are connected to krishna upavas upavas means being very close to god upavas also has another meaning upavas means fasting fasting means uh, not giving any food so you also have to train on ekadashi day at least not give any material things to the senses because all our senses are addicted for material engagement on ekadashi day don't give material engagement then what should i do if i don't give material engagement the senses can't be inactive bhagavad gita krishna says not even one moment your senses can become inactive as long as you are alive that means you you are alive means your senses have to be active so if you tell me don't be active materially then what should i do then you have to be active spiritually so give the spiritual activities to your senses let the eyes on ekadashi engage in reading shrimad bhagavad gita bhagavatam see the devotees vaishnavas or have the darshan of the lord that day let the ears listen that day more and more spiritual vibration hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari hari hare ram hare ram 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 hare hare in this way and the tongue is engaged in chanting the holy name the hands and legs and other working senses are engaged in serving the lord that day so this is the meaning of ekadashi upavas engaging all the 11 senses in the remembrance of the 
Lord, maximizing association of the Lord, coming as close as possible to the Lord. One more meaning of Ekadashi means the eleventh. The eleventh sense is mind. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Manmana Bhava Madbhakto. He says, Your mind should be completely absorbed in me. Your mind should completely be immersed in thinking in my thoughts. So the Ekadashi, even if you go by another meaning of Ekadashi, means the mind, the mind should be Upavas, means mind should be closer to the God that day. Our mind should be fasting from all the material things and increase the spiritual things. So in this way, the another meaning of Ekadashi is bringing all the 11 senses closer to God. Close association with Krishna. Now, generally what happens? If you see maximum time goes in a day, if you very carefully observe, in eating, cooking the food, and working for that going, bringing the vegetables, cutting, cooking, washing. So most of our time goes in this. So that is why it is said, <clears throat> don't do all these activities that day. If, if at all your goal is to engage your senses in service of the Lord, in remembrance of the Lord, let those senses not get busy in cooking food and all those things. So which is the best day where I can avoid cooking? At the same time, I can increase my fasting. Anyway, if you go by material science, the today's modern science, they're saying because of the moon influence, your digestive system and you know all those things is at the great risk on the 11th day. So the better you don't cook that day. Anyway, you're not supposed to eat that day. And from the 11th day, the moon effect, go, the, the pull of the moon goes on increasing till the uh, Purnima Ramavasya. So... We have to reduce our eating, especially on the 11th day. So that is why don't eat on 11th day. These are all the material and apparent explain spiritual explanation. But in the previous part, we also discussed how there are spiritual reasons. How Lekadashi is an expansion of Lord Vishnu himself, the, compassion, the compassionate incarnation. And whoever does fasting on Ekadashi day, the Lord has promised that all their sin will be eradicated. And also, because of this uh, scientific explanation, we can understand the food that we eat, the food that we get digested, which is there in our body because of the moon's pull on our mind, our uh, digest digestion system, there is an imbalance. And already it is said, the decision making and the memory, everything is affected. So Bhagavad Gita Krishna says to Arjuna's question that why do I do sinful activities? Atakkena prayukto yam papam charati purushaha And Krishna is saying kama esha krodha esha rajoguna samudbhavaha In that Krishna says what all effect it has got? Smriti vibrahma when your memory gets disturbed and that has uh, uh, you know impact on your decision making and once your decision making is lost then you are completely doomed. So all these things are connected. So the food that we eat has impact on our memory, impact on our decision making, all these things. And another thing is, why not eat grains on Ekadashi? Especially grains. Okay, sometimes, first of all, we are not supposed to eat anything because digestion system is at its weak, its weakest uh, you know, time. So then, uh, but it is said, okay, at least you eat uh, fruits. Okay, problem. Why not uh, other items? If you, if you see, carefully see, the grain consume a lot of water, even to grow, even to cook, you need lot of water. If you see the rice, to cook the rice, you need lot of water. And the grains retain lot of water. So the whole idea is the moon has so much pull on your body because it already has 80% water. On top of that, you are keeping something in your body which is increasing the water content in your body. So the grains retain maximum water in our body. So even if you see from the scientific perspective, 
don't eat grain because that increase the water retention in the human body all other things are very uh, if you see any fruits and all these things even though they also contain more water but they they come out very fast so the retention time is very less but the grain if you eat it doesn't come out very fast it takes longer time they stay in our body system for longer time more longer it stays during this phase of the moon more we come under the moons the pull gravitational pull and our thinking our memory our everything gets affected gets disrupted so the how much science is there you see so reduce this whole thing so that you don't come under all this uh, uh, pull of the magnetic pull of the moon during this time so that your thinking remains sharp so that your memory doesn't get disrupted so that your sinful tendencies during this time will come down but the moment the memory and your thinking decision making gets disrupted by default our thinking will go in the direction of sinful activities so don't eat that is why it is also said papa purusha is there in the grain the tendency to make you do sinful activities increases if you eat grain an ekadashi so all are correlated so the final point is uh, from the scientific point from the spiritual perspective all are telling us so that we have a healthy life emotionally balanced life and spiritually upgrading life human life is meant for moksha anything that distracts you from moksha affects your moksha has to be avoided so we need good health idam shariram sadhanam this human body is given to us so that we use this human body to reach moksha so the even the scientific research that says if you want to remain healthy if you want to remain uh, live longer and healthy happily then you better don't eat so that your junk dna that uh, whatever the loss that happens in the junk dna doesn't happen so that also helps you yes we need good health we need we need to live longer so that i do proper sadhana so that i i can complete my spiritual practice sufficiently secondly you not only you need physical health you also need a emotional balance you also need good emotion what do what do you mean by emotion emotion of anger emotion of uh, lust emotion called greed all these things have to be kept under control but we see that the food that we eat especially during this uh, ekadashi the 11th day onwards whatever this uh, till full moon or no moon has a certain impact on our emotional well being due to this uh, whatever reasons we discussed so by not taking that food your physical health emotional health both are taken care especially lust greed anger can be managed very well if you eat food due to all this um, digestion and all those things lust greed anger go out of the control so we tend to do sinful activities these are all material perspective spiritual perspective is ekadasha means the 11 11 indicating the 11 senses upavasa means coming closer to god that means ekadashi upavasa means bringing all the 11 senses closer to god giving them uh, spiritual engagement maximizing the senses engagement with god with krishna that is by reading by hearing by taking association spending time in the temple by chanting more number of rounds and that is how the all the 11 senses maximize their association with krishna and ekadashi is like a preparatory exam for death there are many people who think oh what is the big deal at the time of death i have to remember god i'll remember no problem but whether you can remember or not an ekadashi you can see an ekadashi little bit you do fasting people will die though this they feel cry so much oh it's so difficult i cannot do i cannot think of uh, you know anything else i'm now thinking of only food so you have to practice so that at the time of death you can think of krishna so it's a preparation every month there are two preparatory exams so if you keep on doing well if you keep scoring good marks in your uh, preparatory exam so that obviously will score well 
in your final exam if you don't do if you fail you are not even sitting for a preparatory exam so much arrogance i know everything i don't need any preparatory exam then you are taking a huge risk you may you may not this ekadashi helps us a lot for preparing for our final what is that ante narayana smriti that is why ekadashi upavasa from both the perspective is very important and we have to uh, you know without a miss we have to follow this so with this we'll stop grantaraj shrimad bhagavad gita ki jagat guru shri la prabhupad ki nitay gor prem anande